Right, we're going to push on uh, with our next act, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just doing a slightly shorter set, which means I can't go to the German kebab shop, which apparently is my only fucking option now, um, on the high street to get some food. Uh, but uh, I've worked with this guy before. I'm sure you're going to love his stuff. Are we ready for our next act? Stuff. So that love and enthusiasm, please put your hands together and work the stage. Do go to Santa! Thanks very much. Uh, it's good to be in Reading, the world's most mispronounced city name. <laughs> Pardon me? Sorry, I don't have, as he said, it's a short set. Uh, I don't have time for audience interaction. <laughs> I can't uh, get that accent either, but it's all right. It's good to be in Reading. Uh, well, my wife is Austrian and vegetarian, so it's good to be anywhere but home, uh, to be honest with you. She's not watching. Uh, yeah, um, some of you might have kids. Uh, yeah, <laughs> me too, brother. So people say, people say the day my child was born was the most beautiful, the most exciting day of my life. These people have clearly never been released from an Iranian prison. <laughs> right? Am I right? <laughs> English is just full of slogans. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to read the room. I, I, I just can't see these guys. Um, yeah, I can see you. Just the first row. I can see you. Two thumbs up. Great. Um, trying to read the room. Um, which one is your favorite war? <laughs> do, you, do you have a favorite war? All because you won all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. Fair point. Okay. Uh, so you're gonna like my set. Okay. Now well, listen, guys. Uh, uh, I'm gonna say this thing, um, I, I feel like there's good vibe in the room, I'm gonna say this thing, and I, I don't care who hears it, or I'm just gonna say it, alright? Nazis were bad. <laughs> okay, I said it, I said it, it's out there, I can't take it back. Uh, Nazis were bad, and they did terrible things, and one of the worst things they did, uh, they basically killed people they deemed uh, unfit or defective, a burden, right? Um, including unborn children, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and all my life I've been told that it was bad to get rid of these unborn babies because they would have been a burden on the German Reich and its aspirations of world supremacy. But nowadays I'm being told it's okay to get rid of a baby because it would be a burden on Karen from HR <laughs> and her aspirations of getting a promotion. <laughs> I, I don't get it. I mean, if anything, Nazis made a better point. Better <laughs> no, uh, seriously. Nazis would tell this, this unborn baby, you got to die. Why? I tell you why. Because all German folk needs to be re reunited in one ancestral German Vaterland. That's why. Because the Versailles Treaty was a travesty. You don't know much about Versailles Treaty, do you? We lost Danzig. We lost Danzig. Our territorial integrity has been interrupted. Germans are now living under France, under Poland, under Czechoslovakia. Germans are even living under Mussolini. We kind of like Mussolini, but that's not the point. We cannot sustain the war effort if we need to take care of the likes of you, unless you can become a soldier who speaks also English, because according to all future World War II movies, the Wehrmacht personnel all spoke English to each other. Okay? So, you gotta die. Now, fast forward to our time, you tell the baby, you gotta die. Why? Because your mom needs to continue to do after work drinks and Peloton. Do you know how much <laughs> Peloton subscription costs? Yeah. Your mom is a junior event manager with Thompson & Thompson. She needs to become a senior event manager. <laughs> what is even an event I mean, the Germans had a clear cause, okay? It was well defined. It was clear. Right? I mean, some of you are sitting there thinking, oh, the Germans did have a good case. <laughs> Compared to the mom who wants to keep doing Peloton. This is, this is going much better than it did at Goldsmith University campus. <laughs> Okay. Where were you when I needed you? 
don't worry, I do better on YouTube. Um, so, yeah, a lot of babies killed for, for the mom's career. Can you imagine killing your own baby for your career and be still paid 30% less than a man? Can you imagine that? I mean, you can only imagine that because, because gender pay gap is a myth. It's been debunked time and time over. So, so it's just a joke. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but can you bear imagining that? So, um, yeah, so in the U.S., Roe v. Wade, uh, they, they upturned, uh, the Supreme Court upturned Roe v. Wade, and that was a setback for, for casual dating and casual sex, you know, because now American women can only bang guys who can potentially step up to the situation and take care of them and the potential baby. And they are quite, quite, quite upset about it. Now I can only open my legs for a guy, but after I have ascertained that he is responsible and kind? Are you kidding me? Thank you, Supreme Court. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> but it was a victory, it was a setback for women's uh, reproductive rights, uh, whatever that is, but it was a victory for babies who want to live. So, and a victory for Christian biology. Do, do you guys know Christian biology? No, I was born in Italy, uh, I, I went to a Catholic school, um, so I learned Catholic biology. You know, according to progressive biology, a woman's body, at certain uh, phases in her life, has another beating heart, another brain in it, limbs and an extra pair of kidneys, but according to Christian biology, no, no, no. A woman's body has just one heart and one brain throughout her life, you know? So basically, if you are a woman, and you ever find another beating heart in your body, it's not your body. And if you are a man, and you find another beating heart in your body, it's not your body. And also you are not a man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's Christian biology for you guys. <laughs> hey guys, uh, get this. Now, now Disney Corporation is paying um, it's employees' travel expenses, so they can travel to blue states and get an abortion. I mean, Disney produces content for children, right? <laughs> and they're subsidizing the killing of children. So in a statement, Disney Corporation said, we are doing this because we understand women's rights. What we don't understand is irony. <laughs> yeah? Like killing your customers? It's like, it's like, it's like London declaring war on Russian oligarchs. <laughs> right? um, and Planned Parenthood, they now have mobile abortion clinics. They have mobile abortion vans, RVs, driving close to the borders of the red states, luring pregnant women in. I mean, that's some serious commitment. These guys really, really love killing black babies. <laughs> They're mostly black, you know, and in America, every second black baby is aborted, right? I mean, you can, you can, you can try not to laugh, but you can't not learn. <laughs> I mean, even the Nazis didn't do that. The Nazis didn't come up with, with mobile gas chambers. And they had the technology, they had the, the iconic Volkswagen um, camper. You know, they, they, they didn't drive to the Swiss border trying to, to tempt the Swiss to give up their Jews. The Nazis had principles. They're like, if, if we conquer this land fair and square, we exterminate them. <laughs> but if it's not our land, we don't drive there. <laughs> right? <laughs> Nobody said this was going to be easy, guys. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what, what really disturbs me? Planned Parenthood. What sort of a messed up joke name that is? Planned Parenthood. There's not much parenthood going on there, right? Right? It's like, it's like by the time you leave, there's no, no more parenthood. Yeah. It's, like, it's like McDonald's calling itself Planned Workout. Right? So. A lot of planning, but not, not, not much parenting. It's like me planning my visit to Australia and start the plan by shredding my tickets to Australia. <laughs> but of course, 
they need a catchy title, right? It's all about branding and, and attracting attention. It's like you have something similar in this country. Uh, equity release. That's a terrible concept disguised under good names. Who doesn't like equity? Who doesn't like release? Americans are more honest about it. They call it reverse mortgage. Because when you sell back your house to the bank, it's like, hey, you got a house in Southeast England, right? And you know your kids will never have a house? And their only chance of having a house is maybe this house? Okay, do you have a dark sense of humor? <laughs> right? Yeah, you are a baby boomer, right? So your grandparents fought the war, your parents rebuilt the country, then you arrived right in the middle of the economic boom, hence boomer. You had drugs, sex, rock and roll, university for free, bought your house for 200 pounds and, and retired at the age of 45. Yes, friends, you deserve a lifetime of cruise ships ahead of you. <laughs> Equity release. So, so in America you have pro-life and pro-choice, and these, these sound nice, right? So you go to these guys and try to decide, you know, which side you are on. So you go to the pro-life people and say, okay, you are pro-life, what are you all about? Oh yeah, we are pro-life, so we want the baby to get to live. So the mother dies? No, we are pro-life. The father dies? <laughs> Nobody dies, we are pro-life. Okay, you sound extremely reasonable. Uh, but let me check out these guys as well. But I'm on to you, okay? Now, you guys, pro-choice, what does that mean? Whose choice? Well, the mom's choice, of course. And what about the baby? The baby doesn't get a choice. And the father? The father doesn't get a choice. Okay. Um, and this choice you keep bringing on, what, what, what is this choice anyways? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Let me explain. The choice is chopping up the limbs of the baby one by one, crushing the skull, and then vacuuming the whole thing out with a suction device. How about that? Why didn't you leave for it with that? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm, I know it's a tough, tough decision, but when I really weigh both sides, and when I take a step back and try to see the bigger picture, I think I'm going with these guys, but may, may, may God have mercy upon your degenerate soul. <laughs> um, I wish I could do this, do this in my uh, home country of Italy, but they are, not, they are not as much into killing unborn babies as you guys. <laughs> also, the other problem is that we don't have stand-up in Italy because the weather is nice outside. <laughs> So I had to come here for the British sense of humor. And I love your sense of humor. I know Louis is not a big fan. And, uh, I agree you have the best sense of humor. And uh, I tell you why. Because when you think about it, if my country had won both world wars and was still smaller and poorer than Germany, <laughs> I would want to have a bloody good laugh about it as well. <laughs> All right then, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we made history here. You've just seen the world's first and only pro-life stand-up act. <laughs> which means you've just seen the world's funniest pro-life stand-up act. I mean, I, thank you, thank you, thank you. I would have, I would, I'm not greedy, I would have settled for bronze, I would have settled for silver, but uh, you know, it's so easy as a right-wing comedian to be on the top level in your field because the field is very much a desert <laughs> than field. And so so if, if nothing else works out for you in your life, nobody can take this moment away from you. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been amazing. I have been very accurate. Thank you very much. <laughs>